This is a village that spawned inside a cave, and this is a jungle temple with no jungle. Today, we're gonna be exploring the rarest things you can find in Minecraft. And as the video goes on, the seasons will get more and more crazy until we find the rarest worlds you can see in Minecraft. In a game made of blocks, a circle really stands out, which is why this seed is such a rare find. Now, usually we'd be stuck spending the time looking at a circle guide to build one of these, but here it's already laid out for us like so, and that's a cool find for sure. So while it's not the most useful landmark in the game, it is an unusual sight worth showing off to your friends. And even if it doesn't hold a candle to Mr. Cat's circle, it's better than anything I could possibly build. With the 1.18 update, Minecraft gave us something new to listen to the other side music disc. And while it's a solid selection, the 3.1% chance of finding it is a high barrier to entry. So luckily this seed comes to the rescue. In this case, you can find three other side discs inside of the dungeon chest, which is the kind of luck that some of us can only dream of. But if you come across it, then it's definitely something worth showing off, both in a jukebox and an item frame. And if you ask me, either of those is solid decor. Now, when you've played Minecraft as long as we have, some days it starts to seem a bit bland, and even striking diamonds doesn't turn that around. But well, you might find yourself feeling a little bit more upbeat after you see what this amethyst geode has to offer. From this angle, the geode doesn't seem too different from what we're used to, but from up here, we can see a full smiley face. And that not only draws our eye towards it, but it also has a funny way of making us feel better too. Because come on, how could you not feel better after seeing something rare like that? And if you're needing to pick me up, it's worth taking a look. Usually, finding a village is a tough task, but this one seems tough to reach almost by design. Here, we've got a standard tundra village that managed to spawn right in the center of an ice spikes biome, which looks pretty brutal, but at least they still have one tree left for farming, if you need be. So while I wouldn't recommend spawning here if you have high hopes for a farming town, it is nice to know that if you want to ditch society and let it go, there's a town ready to keep us company. Visiting another country is usually on our bucket list, but actually getting there often requires a heavy chunk of change. Though with this seed, we can get our own scale model of a real world Australia to explore, but with a noticeable twist. You see, this island spawns in with almost the exact same dimensions of Australia, but with a mushroom biome base. And while that might be a surreal sight to any natives, it seems a lot more peaceful than the outback that they're used to. And while I wait for my passport to renew, that should be a good fillet. Reaching the end dimension is no easy task, and no small part of that is just how long it takes to find the portal room once you're in the stronghold. But here, this simplifies both steps. Since if we were to stop at this unusually spawned azalea tree and dig down, we'll notice that eventually we'll reach the stronghold. And more importantly, the portal room is immediately over here as soon as we walk in. So if you're looking to save on Ender Eyes and cut down on the search time, this might be a solid way to reach the fight on your next world. Maybe it's just me, but when I start a new world on an island in the middle of nowhere, I'll usually just restart. But this time, that'd be too hard to pass up on, since on this seed, we spawn in a giant floating piece of stone in the middle of the ocean blue. But hey, if it's not for you, then at least the three trees on this island will offer just enough wood for a boat to sail away. Though, if you do that, maybe bring one of the wolves with you. It's the least you can do. While ender pearls are a necessity in any run, taking them from Enderman is no fun task, and arriving at the end portal with less than you need is even less fun. So if you're looking to cut out the middleman and get right to it, I can't imagine a better solution than this. You see, underneath these two neighboring islands, there's a completed ender portal beneath the mushroom one. And seeing as the mushroom islands don't have monsters spawning within, that means smooth sailing to reach the end. But once we get there, that's a different story of course. Picture this, you and your village want to move away from mainland and find yourself some peace and quiet. And then, when you finally get there and situated, all the way out in the sea, there's yet another village within render distance. Well, that's just the case on this seat. And not only do we have neighboring villages, but neighboring islands as well. And while that might seem a little tedious to hop between the two villages, it'll make trading with the fishermen even easier. And hey, there's less room for zombies to spawn to disturb the population. That's a good thing too. Just look out for drowned tridents and the rest should be fine. Waterfalls in Minecraft usually don't offer much to see, or do for that matter. But in this case, it's a lot more than just a water block on a mountain's face. Instead, we've got a proper system of flowing pools carved into the cave system, which might I say is a lot more interesting to look at. And it's gotta be a lot more fun as a water park than just another slide like this. So while the dripstone cavern might seem like an odd place to bust out your swimsuit, this might have to be an exception. In update 1.13, we saw shipwrecks finally get introduced into the game. And now it seems like 1.18 has brought these ships right back up to the surface. Or at least this seed did. And here we see an example of a ship docked right on the shores and houses of these villagers. And while I might be waiting for a new captain to take the wheel, I'd venture none of these Squidwards are up to that task. But even if it's just eye candy, this boat adds a lot more excitement to what would have been yet another standard village. And that I can appreciate. 
Exploring the new caverns found in the 1.18 world generation is a fun endeavor for sure, but having to check for creepers and skeletons behind your back every five seconds is not as much. So to play on the safer side and get a change of venue, this Mushroom Fields cavern seems like a better pick. Here we get that same expansive cave to explore, but in a biome where only bats can spawn in the dark below. And folks, that's basically free spawn proofing, which trust me, will be much appreciated the next time that you go looking for ores. The hustle and bustle of average village life often involves a lot of but it would seem like this user found a solution to that. Because in this seed, we see that there's not much here except for a couple of farms. And unfortunately, that also means that there are no villagers to start trading with. And to make matters worse, these piddly farms aren't even as fast as something automatic like so, which is pretty disappointing when it's the only thing in sight. But if you need some alone time for nothing but you and your vegetables, this might be right up your alley. While the Badlands biome is a fair amount of color, you're not going to be seeing too much green around, and that's why this is such a welcome sight. Here, a lush cave happened to spawn right above ground inside of the deserted biome, which is a rare occurrence guaranteed. And while that alone would be enough just to see one of these lush caves spawn up so high, it's even stranger that it picked this climate. So while I might not understand what could cause this, I will say that the green mixed in with the orange really has a way of spicing up the scenery that we're used to. Finding a dungeon is a lucky break, so finding five of them is real jackpot material. Here, we spawn in lucky enough to find multiple of the things right underneath our world spawn, which would be crazy by itself, but we've also got quite the variety, with two skeletons, two zombies, and even a spider spawner to choose from, proving that if you're willing to dig to the bottom of the world, there's plenty here to make a record-setting design. And for any technical players out there, I for one would love to see how optimized this could be as a farm. Protecting a village isn't always such an easy task, but here, the world generation seems to lend a hand. And seemingly taken after the secret panda village, these fellas seem to have set themselves up right on the mountain's edge. And yeah, while the sea nearby is a pretty sight, I'd personally hate to be this poor fella living down here in the water. And to me, it looks like they got evacuated for some reason or another. But if you're looking for an easy raid to get that toad of undying, then this might be a solid location. Now, if you're like me, you've probably spent a bit too much time watching these satisfying video compilations, which, if that's right up your alley, you might want to take a look at these ocean monuments. Because, after a closer look on the seat itself, these temples are not only facing each other, but they wind up being exactly perfectly aligned, which is for sure worth showing off to your friends. And while they might seem normal past that, just keep in mind, a double ocean temple means double guardian trouble, so make sure to bring plenty of milk and a sword when you visit. If you're lucky, it's fully possible to find diamonds inside of your village's blacksmith chest. But what about finding a blacksmith chest next to your diamonds? Or, that is to say, a village that spawned all the way down by the deep slate level. This way, we not only have a villager market to trade and manipulate with, but the rares and resources right nearby for trading, providing us with an excellent alternative to the long trips back to the village. And while there might be a slight monster problem down there, if you're willing to fight, there's definitely a way to make it work for you. In every survival run, there comes a time where you've got to find the stronghold. But if you're trying to cut out all the digging that it takes to get there, this scene might be your solution. We see here that this stronghold managed to spawn right before our very eyes at surface level, giving us an easy entry. And that way our shovels stay shiny and Steve doesn't have to break a sweat. So while it might sound daunting to take on the Ender Dragon this early in the game, at least now you'll know how to find it once you're prepared. And I'm sure the Enderman will appreciate us not having to give them any trouble for the pearls. Finding a mansion is pretty rewarding, but unfortunately, it also requires covering a lot of ground. Though in this case, no matter how much time we spend walking above ground, it'll all be wasted, since this very mansion happened to spawn right inside of a lush cave. And while I haven't seen many mansions in my time, I doubt there are many out there with a personal cave in their backyard. So if you're willing to travel the tens of thousands of blocks to see this, it really is a once in a lifetime sight. And if you reach it, at least take some pictures for the rest of us. Being a little out of place can really cause for some confusion, and seeing an entire building out of place can do that, and then some. Here, a jungle temple managed to spawn right outside of its biome and out in the middle of the ocean. And while being out at a waterfront property might seem like a dream come true, there is one key downside to the location. This being that when we check inside, there are no chests to be seen, giving this floating temple a lot more of a sinking feeling. When you first spawn into the world, your first goal is usually to find a cave. But here, that's not so difficult. Since on this seed, we not only spawn in the heart of a cave system, but we're also standing on a ruined portal structure. And that alone would be crazy enough, but here's the twist. Now, if we were to grab the pickaxe out of this chest and then dig straight down, we'll find ourselves in the void no less than 10 seconds later. And while it's not the speedrun that we'd hope for, it is crazy to see that there's naturally broken bedrock this readily available. If you're looking to find sunken treasure, then the obvious choice seems like the bottom of the ocean. But here, that's just not so. In this seed, it seems that this ship was not only torn in half, but taken sky high. And this definitely gives us a new take on the Flying Dutchman. So while this might not be a functioning pirate ship, it definitely gives a little bit of variety to your world. And hey, if you're looking to become both a captain and a pilot, this ship seems like a solid candidate, just as long as you can reach the second half. And with that, folks, have a good one, all right?